The correct answer to the warm-up question is statement B. An object can have non-zero kinetic energy even if its center of mass is not moving. Let's look at the three statements and see why A and C are false and B is true. Statement A is false because when an object rolls without slipping, its translational speed V is related to its angular speed omega through the rolling without slipping relationship V equals R omega. And it will have both types of kinetic energy, that due to rotation, one half I omega squared, and that due to translation, one half MV squared. So an object can have both rotational and translational kinetic energy as it rolls without slipping. Statement B is true because when an object undergoes pure rotational motion with no translation, it has rotational kinetic energy even though it's not translating. So an example might be some type of round object that is rotating about a fixed axis of rotation. It's just spinning around, around, and around about that axis, but it's not moving left or right or up and down in the translational sense. Statement C is false because if an object slows down, then its final translational speed Vf is less than its initial translational speed Vi, and its final angular speed omega f is less than its initial angular speed omega i. So both of those changes in both translational and rotational kinetic energy will be negative, and the total kinetic energy change can be negative since an object is slowing down. With that in mind, let's apply the work energy theorem to an example that involves two identical cylinders that have the ability to move under the influence of an external force F Y C that you apply to the cylinders. The force is the same in both situations. Both cylinders are identical with the same radius R. The first cylinder can rotate about a fixed low friction axis of rotation through the center. And the second cylinder can roll without slipping on a horizontal surface that we're going to define to be the ground. And the question is, after each cylinder has made one full revolution, which cylinder has a larger change in total kinetic energy? Think about your choices, try to choose the correct one, and we'll be back with the solution.